everybody. Well, good morning. Hi, good morning, uh, President Gao. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm Dante Su from Fuan Hospital. It's my great pleasure to introduce uh, my fellows, my staffs. Uh, on my right hand is uh, Dr. Lo, Dr. Lo Minyao, Dr. Fang Kuen. Uh, the nurse here is Cheng Chan, Hua Chao, Lai Jiaxing. Our tactician is Liu Wamu. Also, uh, the anesthetist is Dr. Li Jing. So today, I uh, would like to show a special case. The patient uh, suffered from the aortic ulcer just on the aortic arc. It's a set, uh, 77 gentleman. So he suffered from the chest pain and we for one month. Uh, also, uh, he was admitted to our hospital and calculated the blood pressure and other things. It seems like the hypertension for more than 20 years. <laughs> next, please. So let's take a look, take a review of the CT scan. So we may find just inside the aortic arc, there are huge PAU. So that's why the patient suffered from the chest pain and back pain. So try it again. That's a 3D reconstruction. So today, we just now, we performed the angiogram for the aortic arc. Then we may find the PAU is just near the left subclaving artery. So this time, we'd like to make her fenestration. The fenestration uh, should be uh, in vitro, not in situ. Why? As we know, as we take a look at the CT, uh, CT scan and angiogram, so we may find oh, yeah. the left clotted and the left subclaving and enormous are very near in order to get a longer traditional landing zoom. So we have to make a big fenestration. The fenestration should be focused on left clotted and the left subclaving. So let's do it. We just calculate the diameter of the outer just near the left clotted artery is nearly 13.6, 35 to 13.6. So today, we'd like to use uh, the standing graft is coming from left tech. It's a right device. Then we will take a look on the radiation. Then we check where's the mark. Where's the mark? So this device has a super sleep valve. So when we find the mark, one is zero, another one is eight. Then we will make translation. Okay. Well, yes, well, please, nice talk. Great. Well, thanks so much. It's, it, I love the fact that you're starting off CIT and these transmissions with a, a complex endovascular case. We have a really Thank great you. panel here today. Um, Professor Gao is uh, moderating along with me. We have Jumbo Gu, David Hildick Smith, Hassan Jalahui, Chaim Latan, Gary Min, Sahil Parikh, Nicola Piazza, Patrick Soroyes, and Craig Walker here. Um, so, are you going to you're going to show us some of the uh, the in situ fenestration that you're going to be doing now? Yes. Uh, would you please uh, focus on the standing graft? So now we just release partial of the standing graft. Then we calculate and make the mark. So as, as just we calculate, we'd like to make a big fan switching because the PAU is very near to the left clotted and the elomiate. So we have to make a huge fenestration. So we will make a fenestration uh, from beginning.
So maybe while you're doing that, just briefly, um, Sahil, do you want to talk to us a little bit about the indications for the procedure, uh, penetrating aortic ulcer, and is this the standard approach or surgery okay. and pros and cons? So, okay, so Mayor Pajo. This is a area in the field. Right now, uh, the typical approach previously had been open surgery oh, for can't these hear, patients. can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. So originally, in such kind of situation, the usual way, the usual way is to open surgery. But as we know, the patient is very old. It's 77. So if we do open surgery to the patient, maybe he will suffer from lots of complications because of acute tumor. So that's why we want to select the Endo procedure to treat this patient. This one. So we make fan switching now. It's very clear. Get on. So is your is your mic on? Yeah, my mic's on. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. With the headphones. It works with the headphones. Can you hear me? Zero. So press down and against moderators. Can you hear me? Sorry, you cannot hear me. What? Dr. Shu. Dr. Shu, can you hear us? There's some communication hey. problem. Hi. Hello, President Gao, can you hear me? Yeah, plug this into the... Uh... Now it's okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, good. I cannot hear you. Something's wrong with my... <sighs> now we can hear you. I'm sorry, President Gao. There's a problem with the cell phone. Get Shu Jun Bajiga. So now we finish the penetration. So now we already make the fan switching and reassembling the device. Wait. Can I turn? Okay, okay, more. So we reassembling the device. So, oh, okay. Then no, I might take it. So we are reassembling the device carefully. That's all. Mm. Oh. Yes. So originally, to treat such kind of patient, we usually use a chimney. But as you know, uh, the complications for chimney is maybe the patient suffer from endoleak. 
So that's why we try to use the fence switching. I think that. Okay. Okay. Oh, my mind. That is. So we reassembling the device carefully. Stop. I paid it. Paid it. So that looks like it, dun, 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 it crimped reasonably well and went into the sheath. So can you see the device? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we almost finished reassembling the device. Okay. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. This one. Oh, okay. Now we finish reassembling the device. Then we check it. We check it. We check yeah, the mark yeah, is on the right position or not. Okay. Yes. Okay, so the mark is on the ideal position, then we flush it. And the device has a mark on the device, you please play the movie. turn it correct so you can be in the appropriate orientation. Yeah, flush it, please. Okay. Yes. So maybe any thoughts from the panel on this way of treating this uh, ulcer? You can ask what is trouble. So can you hear me? Our moderators, chairman, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. We can. Sorry, you cannot hear me. Oh, thank you. Okay. Come on. Okay. So, any questions? Yes, now we deliver the land quest. Okay. So, so this one, uh, we have to make sure the fence switching area is focused to the LT arc, to the branch vessels. So it's very challenging. As we know, since the uh, PAU is not on the position, just the near the three branches, it's on the upper side of the three branches. So we can make a large penetration in order to preserve, preserve the branch vessels to, to be open. So now we deliver the device So now we just deliver the device here. So pay much attention to the mark. Can you see that mark eight and zero? So that's very important. Then we deliver the device carefully to the LD arc. So it's right here. Then we may find the eight and the zero is focused on this place. Then would you please replay the movie for me? Angiogram for me, please. Fan, fan zao yin. Then we check it. We double check. Show me the bones, please. Bak wu de wo kan kan. Uh, Dr. Parekh, you are the expert. Can you give some comments? Sure. This, uh, this is an evolving technique. This uh, traditionally was done with open surgery and now uh, more traditionally with a covered stent graft with a carotid subclavian okay. bypass. The fenestration technique uh, that was demonstrated uses okay. existing uh, stent grafts uh, and allows one to put a, a covered stent into the subclavian artery uh, through the fenestration in the stent graft, allowing for a complete seal uh, of the uh, aortic penetrating ulcer, in this case, almost pseudoaneurysm. So you can see as he's uh, unfurling the device, uh, the orientation is such that the fenestration is facing uh, 
uh, towards the uh, subclavian artery where, where you're marked by a wire coming from the, uh, from the arm. Uh, and so you can see he's deployed the stent graft here carefully uh, and uh, released the nose cone uh, and now withdrawing the delivery system. And so now the key will be to uh, reaccess the subclavian and uh, complete the uh, procedure with a covered stent into the uh, subclavian artery. Subsequently, ensuring a proper seal is, is critically important to, uh, to making sure that this segment does not further expand or, or uh, be, become pressurized. You can see here, Gee, he withdrew his wire into, the, nice. into the arm and, and easily uh, brought the catheter down through the fenestration into the aorta. It's, uh, he makes it look quite easy. Thank you. So we just released the fenestration stain graft, and we put the valve inside to the fenestration area. Then we will perform another angiogram. Yes, please. So this was what he was trying to explain as, as he advanced the device. The, uh, you, the markers uh, that were seen with the two circular uh, dots uh, were the area that was fenestrated, and that's how he could decide. Uh, which orientation on the outer curvature uh, versus inner curvature he needed to advance the device. So you can see here that now he's got uh, access from the subclavian artery into the uh, ascending aorta with a catheter, uh, and the key now will be to uh, to advance a supportive okay, wire wow, please. Uh, and, uh, and then deliver. He's going to do an aortogram here with a pigtail catheter. Yeah, so, so um, Sahil, assuming that the orientation doesn't work exactly right. Then what? What happens? idea? So there are a few different ways to, to bail out of that. Some of them require refenestrating, uh, and there are okay. those operators that will actually um, leave the graft intact and then puncture through the graft uh, instead of uh, fenestrating it a priori. This is more of a surgical technique uh, where you make a uh, custom graft on the table based upon the anatomic landmarks and the CT imaging. Uh, but uh, again, here he made it look easy. Uh, with with oh. the orientation and the, uh, and the positioning of the graft. So, so are you so going to take an aortogram to, to see now? Angiogram. Because it, it looked initially like based upon both the CT and the initial angiogram that if, if the fenestration is lined up properly, you might get seal without having to necessarily yes. stent graft the subclavian and the carotid, but, but then you worry that late with migration or otherwise you okay. might not get it. Okay. You can see that there's a very little blush into the so, dear professor and dear president. So now we release the stenting graft when we find yes. the fenestration yes. just focused to the left body and left subclavian artery. The PAU is disappeared. The small endolytic from the graft, so that's reasonable. So you may find the mark is just below the enormous and the left body and left subclavian are perfect. So we can measure the blood pressure and also we put a valve inside to the uh, left subclavian artery. So, I suppose we needn't deploy any blunt stand graft to it because the blood stream is perfect. Would you please turn, turn the, the window? Yes. We will perform another angiogram and zoom way back. We perform another angiogram with double check. That's way. So, can you see? So the wire is inside to the fenestration area. Then we perform another angiogram. Okay. Then we perform another angiogram, please. Let's go out. Go back. One more time. Just focus to the right place. So this will be an orthogonal projection just to ensure that you have positioning within the fenestration into the aorta. You should join us. Sahil, is there much risk of migration of the device? 
It does occur sometimes in these patients where there's progressive aneurysmal dilatation, uh, but there's a good amount of purchase here uh, in the proximal ascending okay. uh, in this uh, type 3 yes, arch. So it looks like there's a very secure okay. position, uh, and the uh, and the night and all cage is very supportive and, and should, should maintain position reasonably well. And so what is the rationale now for stenting into the subclavian? I mean, is it mandatory? Yeah. Is there... Um, it's not mandatory uh, in this situation where your your ulcer is on the inferior aspect. Uh, uh, however, it is probably related to the isthmus, as they pointed out, and uh, that's usually right just beyond the subclavian origin. So there's a theoretical risk that there's a persistent leak. Uh, it'll be a judgment call as to how it's handled here. It'd be interesting to hear from others in the panel. Uh, about other technologies. They're, they're now uh, fenestrated devices that are it's custom made for patients okay. that are under IDE uh, exploration in the United States and Europe, Europe where uh, CT you scans know, are used to make custom graphs for patients just like this. And what about follow-up? How do you make sure that it can't be sealed? It doesn't keep it as well. Typically, this is uh, followed up with uh, oh, oh, serial examination and then subsequent CT scans, usually at baseline 3, 6, 9, and 12 months uh, in some cases, and then uh, at least annually thereafter. Well, this is a great result, guys. Are you um, wrapping up and then the access was a cut down, I take it, right? Yes, the access is cut down. So because the uh, patient, the femoral artery suffered from severe calcify, so that's why we see that cut down. And tell us about the device, how big is this device? And this is a Chinese device that you use, correct? Yes, okay, finish. So the device, we just calculate the diameter of the air water near the left palate, the left colloid, the size, is 13.5. Then we select the device. Uh, it's made in China. It's from Naftec. The size is 38. So we oversize less than 10 percent. So I uh, replay the movie again. The first one. No, 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 no. We don't care. So this time, uh, the first one. Put the picture in front. Yeah, Momo. In the back. It appears like there's another aneurysm so, down below. Yes, it's not an aneurysm, it's a PAU in distal side. So, this is a good question. So, what should we do? Should we treat the distal side PAU in the same time or separately? As we know, the PAU you, you, we want to treat, uh, we have the indications. First, the PAU, the size is more than 1.5 centimeters. Then the dips should be more than five millimeters. So this time, you want to deploy more stain graph to this site. It's much easier for patients to suffer from pressure. So I suppose this time, we just uh, finish all the procedures, and three months later, we check another CT anagram if the PAU keep in notch in this site, then we will deploy another stain graft. Why we like to do in uh, such method? Because we just want to prevent the peripheral pressure. So, uh, any more questions? Our uh, presidents and professors? Then we will like finish this operation. What's the long-term anticoagulation or antiplatelet treatment for such cases? Uh, you mean the long-term result? Excuse me? I'm sorry, I cannot what, What's your you practice for antiplatelet therapy post-procedure? Oh, uh, post-procedure, so we, we will check the Blood pressures, we will check the angiogram, we will check the CT angiography. Then uh, we can make sure how about the follow up. So that will be all. And do you use anti platelet therapy with aspirin or clopidogrel or both? Or oh, it's not necessary. 
it is not as necessary. Why? Because uh, these two vessels, the penetration is big enough. We deploy no prompt standing ground inside, so it is not necessary. Thank you. So it's not well studied. Shortly uh, after the procedure, usually dual antiplatelet therapy is prescribed and, and then aspirin monotherapy subsequently. Well, thank you so much for that demonstration. I think, you know, you took a case that many would do open surgery on and you made it very, very elegant and nice to perform. Uh, so thanks so much for that. Thank you so much. Thank you, yes, everybody. Thank you, thank thank you. Dr. Fu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.